Hey, pal, do you know what you're auditioning for? Yeah, for the lead role in Heart of the City. Why? <laughs> Are you kidding? Just checking. It's just that this role requires a certain finesse, a touch of class. It's not a charity event. I believe that everyone has a fair shot. I mean, I've been practicing for weeks. Weeks? Darling, I've been training for years, and with the best teachers money can buy, I'd be surprised if you'd even make it past the first round. Maybe, but sometimes raw passion and dedication can make up for years of training. Raw passion? That's cute. But passion won't get you anywhere in this industry. It's all about connections, money, and power. And from the looks of it, you seem to be lacking all three. No, you might be right, but at least I'm here to give it my all. I'm not afraid of rejection, and every no brings me closer to a yes. Save your little speeches. I've heard them all before. It's a waste of time for someone like you. You should probably just leave and save yourself the embarrassment. Thank you for your advice, but I'll stay. I face bigger challenges than an audition. I've never faced a hurdle I couldn't jump. Your loss. Why do you want this role? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Another feather in my cap. Another accomplishment to flaunt. You know, for me, it's, it's to give a voice to people like me. To show that no matter where you come from or how little you have, dreams are worth chasing. Ew. Dreams are for children. This is the real world, Betty. Well, hello there. You must be Juan Rodriguez and Isabella Ward. Yes, ma'am. All right, then. Please follow me. Wait, hold on. We're auditioning together? Yes. The leads of the show are husband and wife, and we want to get a sense of the potential chemistry between our leads. Mm, but ma'am, really, I mean, no offense to Mr. Juan here, but I'm not sure we're operating on the same levels. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I, I don't. Now, if you please follow me. It's disgusting. All right, you two. We'll be reading from scene seven. Juan, you'll be the young lover who just returned from war. And Isabella, you'll be his long lost love. I don't know how you made it this far, but try to keep up. Let's just focus on the scene, all right? Whenever you're ready. <sighs> Maria, it's been years. But every night on that battlefield, there was a thought of your face that kept me going. Oh, Michael, it's been that long, has it? Yes, it has. And each moment felt like an eternity but I made a promise that I would return to you, and here I am. Oh wow, awesome. <laughs> ah, I mean, seriously, Sandra, I don't know how I can be expected to work with such an amateur. I'm kind of surprised this thing knows how to read, to be honest with you. He clearly doesn't know how to act. Ah, uh, well, um, I'll be the one to make those decisions, Isabella. Mm. No. Can you please engage with this scene? This is an important moment. I am feeling it. This is just not how I pictured the scene. Okay. Well, this isn't how you pictured it. It's about bringing these characters to life. Why don't you start from the top? <sighs> Maria. Mm. It's been years, but every night in the battlefield, the thought of your face kept me going. Oh, wow, it's been that long, has it? Okay, stop. Listen, you guys, this just doesn't seem to be working. Um, the scene, it requires chemistry, and I'm just not feeling it. 
I've been acting for years. I can assure you that I'm not the problem. Uh-huh. Can we just be real for a second? You and I both know, Sandra, that my father is one of the biggest benefactors of this theater. So I'm going to get the role one way or another. We really don't need to engage in these formalities. I don't think I would call auditions a formality. Well, I would. And another thing, this whole affirmative action thing is really not how my father wants his money to be spent. So let's try to do a little better with getting the auditions right. Got it, Sandra? Uh, you're right. I do believe I've seen everything I need to see. If you two would please go back to the green room, I'll let you know my casting decisions there. Finally, this has been taking way too long already. Ugh. Thank you both for waiting. I've made a decision regarding the casting for Heart of the City. Juan, your commitment to the role and your dedication during the auditions are evident. You brought to life the character in a way that truly resonated with us. Uh, and what about me? Isabella. You have undeniable talent, but the way you handled yourself during the audition process was unprofessional. In this industry, talent is important, but so is respect and collaboration. Wait, hold on. Are you telling me that I didn't get the part? That is correct. The role of Michael will be played by Juan. This is completely ridiculous. I've been in this industry for years. He is just a nobody. And just wait until my father hears about this. He's not gonna give this place another cent. Being on stage is about the love of the art. It's not just about ego. Why don't you just shut your trap? I can't believe I even have to share air with you. We have many benefactors, Isabella. And we would never let family relationships have any impact on who we choose to perform in our theater. Oh, really? Is that so? What a perfect little theater you have here. Well, guess what? You're gonna regret this, Sandra. I will never forget what you've done here today in this theater. Bye! I'm sorry you had to go through that, Juan. Oh, it's all right. I mean, rejection is a part of the industry. I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Well, now that we have that settled one, do you want the roll? Yes, more than anything. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sandra. Congratulations. I know you'll do the roll justice. I hope so. <laughs> Sophie, you're gonna love it here. I come here all the time to look for outfits before an event. I'm sure we'll be able to find something beautiful here for the both of us to wear at Ava's party. It'll finally give you a chance to try things that are out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I, it does look really nice here, but um, to be honest, I'm not really used to shopping in places like, like this. Kind of makes me feel out of place, but maybe you're right. You know, hopefully we'll find something nice and most importantly, within my budget. Don't worry, girl, that's why I'm here. I'll try my best to help you find something that will look good on you. Think of me as your personal stylist for the day. Let's start looking at these dresses over here. Oh my God, Soph, look at this one. Isn't it absolutely stunning? The quality of it is really nice. I think this would be the perfect dress for you since it looks more, you know, alternative and all. Yeah, you know, this would be the dress most likely, but it would also cost me an arm and a leg to even be able to afford it. Um, how about we go look at another section before I actually start considering selling a kidney for it? Oh, look over there. Let's go check that out. Chloe, what do you think about this one? So, you're kidding, right? <laughs> oh, you were actually serious? 
Well, first of all, it's in clearance. So obviously something has to be wrong with it or nobody found it fashionable and pretty enough to buy it. Hence why it ended up being on these racks. I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, second of all, you need a dress that will complement your body nicely, not accentuate your flaws. I used to work in a luxury boutique just like this, so believe me, I know how these things work. Oh, I just thought it looked really pretty. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you embarrass yourself and go to that party in an outfit that doesn't do you any favors. Anyways, uh, did you happen to find a partner for the party? I think it's kind of strange that there's that rule that you can only come if you have a plus one. <laughs> I don't think it's that crazy. It probably has to do with the seating chart that she came up with, but yes, of course I found a partner. Actually, he's texting me right now. <laughs> well, who is it? I'm going with Alex. He says that he's also going shopping for a suit. I'm so happy he chose me. I heard a lot of girls asked him and he turned them all down to be able to go with me. That's nice. Yeah, it seems like Alex is quite popular. Not a surprise as he is handsome and really sweet. I'm happy for you. Yeah, he's cute or whatever. He'll make me look good standing next to him. How about you? Who are you going with? To be completely honest, I, I haven't found anyone to go with me yet. Yikes. <laughs> it's just the guys from the group are already going with someone or they don't have time to do me the favor. Do you think Ava really would deny me entrance just because I didn't find someone to go with? All I know is if it was my party, I wouldn't let someone in without a date. Kind of ruins the vibes, you know? I'm not really surprised you haven't found anyone yet, though. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> Let's be honest here. If you put a bit more effort into how you look, you probably wouldn't be in this situation right now. It's not really like you hit the gym or wear any makeup. I feel like you're such a tomboy. You kind of like fit in with the guys. So no wonder that no guy would want to take you. You know what I mean? Wow, Chloe, that, that's kind of harsh. I mean, I'm aware that I don't really know how to apply makeup that nicely or dress that fancy, but you don't have to be so mean about it. I'm just telling it how I see it. But I feel comfortable dressing like this. And, and regardless, shouldn't the person you call your partner like you for the way you are? Girl, <laughs> comfortable won't get you a man. I'm telling you, you would have way more luck if you actually worked on yourself. If you want, I also have a business card with the number of the clinic that I go to for the filler. They do a lot of different types of treatments and surgeries. Maybe schedule a consultation and see what their professional opinion is. You really think there's something wrong with the way I look? A little enhancement here and there doesn't hurt anybody. I do think you're pretty, but your nose is a little crooked. Straightening out won't hurt. Wow. Chloe. How I dress is one thing, but attacking the way I look? That's a new low. Come on. You told me just last week that you feel like you have a chubby belly. You could go to the gym and actually work on it and fix it instead of just complaining about it. What are you on about, Chloe? Uh, Alex, what are you doing here? I heard more than enough of what you said. What kind of friend actively belittles and puts down someone like that? Mean doesn't even begin to describe it. No, I, I, was, I was just, you know, saying that Sophie could use some help, that's all. We all have room for improvement, right? It's okay, Alex, you really don't have no, to- No, it's not okay. No one should be judged based on how they look. Chloe, if you want to judge someone, I suggest you look deep and hard into the mirror first. I, I was just trying to give her some friendly advice. Telling her how and why she has to change is not friendly advice. Oops. Sophie, I'm not sure if you have a partner yet or not for the party, but I'd love to go with you. She'll have me. What? You were supposed to go with me. You want to go with her? She doesn't even have anything to wear. She can't afford the things here. And that should tell you all you need to know about what being with her would be like. I'd much rather go with someone who's beautiful on the inside than someone who only cares about superficial things. Let's be honest here, Alex. Looks matter. That's just how this world operates, all right? It's not my fault society works that way. Your attitude and the way you treat people is far more important than anything appearance-wise. You should be ashamed for how cruel you've been to people who care about you. Ugh, give me a break. In this world, you have to be aggressive. In looks, in money, in the way you treat those around you. That's how you get to the top. Well, if the top is filled with people that share your mindset, then I want nothing to do with it. Ugh, save me the poetry. What do you say, Soph? Would you like to go to the party together? I would love to, Alex. Thank you. This is ridiculous. 
Thank you, Alex, for standing up for me. It really means a lot. I'm still a bit in shock. I really considered her a good friend. No need to thank me for that. Nobody deserves to be talked to like that. And I need you to know, I didn't choose to go with you just to spite Chloe. I genuinely think you're super cool and really would love the opportunity to get to know you. Well, what do you think about this dress? I think it looks pretty, just like you. Sophie, look, I think you're overreacting. I didn't mean any harm by what I said. No, Chloe, that was really uncalled for, and I'm not going to allow you to put those types of thoughts into my head. I think it's probably better that we don't talk for a while. Maybe it will give you some time so you can, you know, reflect on what you said. Hey there, are you Karen? Why else do you think I'd be standing here? Fair enough, come on in. Excuse me ma'am, if you wouldn't mind if you could just put your seatbelt on? Uh, yes, I would mind. I don't like the way seatbelts press against my skin. Just focus on driving, please. I understand that ma'am, but I would just feel a lot more comfortable if you put your seatbelt on. Oh yeah, well guess what buddy? I don't really care. If you want me to leave a good review today, you won't talk back to me. I could get you banned from driving like this. Okay, ma'am. You're the boss. That's right. You should feel lucky to have me in your car. Now that I think about it, you do look a little familiar. Have I seen you somewhere before? Yeah, you have seen me before. Uh, you, you're- Karen Walker. Yes, I played District Attorney Franklin on LA Blues. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's me, I'm in the flesh. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's not every day I get to drive around a big celebrity. Well, I'm about to be an even bigger celebrity after today, believe you me. Yeah, well, what do you have planned today? Well, I'm on my way to meet with the director, Justin Powers, who's one of the biggest directors in LA. He wants me to be the lead in his next movie. And I, for one, am so, so ready to leave television behind. That's amazing. Like, did you say Justin Powers? Yes. He's one of the best art tours in the film today. You know who he is? Actually, yeah, I used to go to high school with him. Uh, we were really good friends. <laughs> well, your paths certainly diverged since then. You really should have stayed friends with him. <sighs> yeah, I probably should have. What on earth is this? Oh, I am so sorry. That looks like one of my kids' toys. Uh, I try to clean the car as best as I can before I start my day, and I, I must have just overlooked that one. I, I really apologize. Well, having a clean car is very important. You should be better about that next time. You are absolutely right, and, and it won't happen again. I, again, I apologize. You have a baby daughter? I do. Um, a son as well, actually. Oh my god. Is there an issue? Well, clearly you don't make much money as an Uber driver. How on earth do you provide a good education and a good home on such a low budget? Especially with children. Well, yeah ma'am, it's true that I don't make much money as an Uber driver, but my wife and I work really, really hard to provide for our children, and we do the best of what we have, and we're looking to, to raise our kids as best as we can with the resources we have. It may not be much, but again, we do our best. Well, I just have to be frank. I don't think that poor people should have children. All right, you just pass on your poverty to the next generation. Frankly, it's awful that you have kids. You know what, Miss Walker? I mean, you might be a celebrity and all, but that doesn't give you the right to talk to me however you feel like it. Now, you're right. I don't make that much money. But again, I do the best I can with what I have. So how about for the rest of this ride, until we get to your destination, we just sit in some silence. I'm sorry, did you just tell me to be quiet? Because you don't know how to keep your mouth shut? I'm gonna have to give you a one star rating. So good luck trying to provide for your kids without being able to drive. Miss Walker, please, please don't leave me with a one star rating. I really need this job to provide for my family. Now, I've driven you quickly and safely to your destination. So if you could just find it in your heart to leave me a five star review, please. Should have thought about that before you talk back to me. Toodles. Oh, 
Karen, thought that was you. Hello, Mr. Director. It is so great to meet you in person. So, should we get this meeting started, or would you like to uh, go for coffee first? Yeah, uh, could you just give me one sec? Sure. Thank you. Dan? Dan Stevens. Justin. <laughs> oh, man, good to see you. It's great to see you. God, how long has it been? It's been too long, man. Oh, we need to catch up. Yeah, for sure. Oh, could you give me just one second? Yeah. So, Karen, I overheard you giving my friend Dan here a hard time. He's just trying to do his job. Well, I wouldn't say that, but... I would. I heard the stories that you could be difficult to work with, that you're a pain. I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt, but looks like that was a worthless exercise. Well, Mr. Powers, I, 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 I can just- Save it. I don't work with divas. Hey, what do you say, man? Uh, looks like my lunch hour just freed up. Do you <laughs> want to uh, grab something to eat? Yeah, I'm, I'm down. I could eat. Here, sure, come on in. All right, let's do it. Oh, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm calling my agent. OMG, Mary is being so extra right now. I mean, what's so hard about figuring out a wedding? I mean, when you pick out a husband, if you had to choose between a basketball player or a pop star, you choose the basketball player. I mean, they're taller. Better for the gene pool, duh. Oh my God, if she picks another rapper? <laughs> well, Chloe, I gotta go. I am exhausted from all the shopping. But I'll talk to you later, toodles. Excuse me, does anybody work here? Yes, ma'am, hi. Oh. oh my goodness, are, are you? I am. Ah! I am your biggest fan. Ah! Be an adult and, and not make a scene. As you can expect, I am used to the top service. Of course, I, I am so sorry I can provide that for you. In all honesty, you should have already been here by the time I sat down. Um, so please don't be late again, okay? Yeah, of course, yes, but I'm here now, so, so can I start you off with a drink order? I mean, that's your job, isn't it? Okay, I will have a chilled water with a perfectly sliced piece of lemon and do not forget the lemon, okay? No, of course not. I will get you the best slice of lemon out there. Where do you think you're going? Well, I was gonna go put that order in. Um, I'm ready to order my food. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had a chance to look at the menu. I don't look at menus. In fact, I don't even care what's on the menu. I'm gonna have a filet mignon, medium rare. And, oh, oh just... I'm sorry. This is actually a vegan restaurant. Why does that matter to me? Well, because the thick. I really want a steak, a filet mignon, so you're gonna go get that for me and you're gonna figure it out. Well, the issue is, is we actually don't even have any meat on the premises. But I have a shoot in 35 minutes, and this is the only restaurant within 10 miles of the awful location that the director shows. Well, so I need to get that director fired. Yes, of course. Yes, but anyway, I need 30 minutes to properly chew and process my food. So I'm gonna need you to get it on that quickly. And if you don't, then I'm gonna tweet to my 100 million followers that this restaurant tastes like dog's breath. Uh, of course, ma'am. I will get your filet mignon to you as soon as I can. It's like, no one wants to work anymore. It's ridiculous. Hey, Dan. We have a bit of a problem out there. Problem? What do you mean? Um. Janet Jones is dining with us today. No way, that's so great. Yeah, I, I thought so too, but the thing is, is she's insisting we give her a filet mignon. And, and she says that if we don't give her the steak, then she's gonna tweet that our restaurant tastes like dog breath, which like, doesn't even make sense to me. Sarah, that's, that's literally impossible. I mean, we don't have any meat. This is a vegan kitchen. I was trying to tell her that, but she kept insisting. And you know these Hollywood people, they don't take no for an answer. They just assume they're gonna get everything that they want. Yeah. I guess we could, uh, geez, maybe serve her some tofu and tell her that it's steak? Well, we can't do that. That's lying. She'll sue us. Yeah, yeah, no, we can't do that. It's a bad idea. No, shouldn't do that at all, no. You know? Yeah, the only thing you can do is tell the truth. Yeah, and then whatever happens, happens. But don't worry about doing it yourself. I can go out there and you've taken enough abuse today. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Hi there, ma'am. My name is Dan and I'm the chef of this restaurant. I don't care about your life story, Dan. 
Okay, well, I just received a request from you that was a filet mignon. And uh, unfortunately, as we are a vegan restaurant, I'll be unable to complete this request. Do you know who I am? Yes, I do. So you know what I'm capable of? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, so I don't understand what's so hard about a simple request. <laughs> Ma'am, this is a vegan restaurant. Okay, we, we don't have meat in here and we can't make it just magically appear. You know, the incompetence I have to deal with on a daily basis is just astounding, especially here. So you know what? I think your business is about to go out of business. Oh. You know, just one tweet for me and it's all over. Please, it, this, is a, this is a family owned restaurant that's been in my family for generations. Please, I am practically begging you, man. Hey, don't worry about it, Dan, okay? If I were you, I wouldn't send that tweet, Janet. And why would I do that? Because I filmed this little interaction and I posted it online and it went viral. And let's just say your fans are not too happy with the way that you treat small businesses. Sponsors are dropping like flies. You were a little weasel. Do you know what this is going to do to a brand? Maybe next time you should think about that and be a little kinder to people. I have to go talk to my couple of this right now because of you. Oh. Wow. Sarah, thank you so much. That was such quick thinking. Of course. Don't mention it. I wasn't going to let you lose this restaurant. Oh, um, well, sorry. Excuse me. Oh my gosh! Wow! Uh, Sarah, there, there's so many orders right now. People are ordering to show their appreciation for the restaurant. We're flooded with requests. Well, what are we doing out here? Let's get in the kitchen and cook! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Hello? Excuse me, miss. May I have a moment? What is it? Can't you see that I'm trying to take my cocoa out of her cage? Go bother someone else. I can imagine that Coco is as adorable as ever. However, I must inform you about a recent change in our travel policy. A change in policy? What sort of change? It better not be about my Coco because she's worth more than any full-fledged human being here. She's as much a passenger as anyone. The change I need to discuss does concern pet travel. Our airline has revised the policy and pets are now required to travel in a designated pet suite in checked-in luggage area unless they're service animals. Well, when was this decided? I received no notification. Coco has always been by my side. Surely exceptions can be made for frequent flyers or first class. Do you even know who you are dealing with? I apologize that you didn't know about the policy. You should have received multiple emails regarding the changes as well as the front desk should have notified you when they saw that dog cage. It's clearly bigger than our standard carry-on. This must be some kind of sick joke. How dare some lowly flight attendant try to tell me how to take care of my dog? I'm truly sorry for the inconvenience. The decision was made months ago, and we've been updating our passenger since. The pet suite is designed for comfort. Although it is in the same area as the checked-in luggage, it is specifically designed to comfortably house our customers' loving pets. That's preposterous. Coco is not some ordinary pet that can be sent with the luggage. This must be some sort of ridiculous misunderstanding. I pay good money to be in first class, so I should be able to do whatever I want with my pet. This ticket alone costs more than what you make in a month. Please, again, tell me this is some sort of dumb viral prank you're pulling on me. I wish it were, but I can assure you the pet suite is state of the art, is temperature controlled with ample space, and your Coco will be perfectly fine. You can reunite with her as soon as we land. I don't care about your stupid amenities. Coco stays with me, and that is the final word. She will get anxious without me. Can you expect me to agree to this without any prior warning? I understand your concerns. But like I said before, we really do need to check in your lovely Coco. She unfortunately can't stay with you in the cabin, first class or not. No reason to worry, however, we aim to assure the well-being of all of our passengers including Coco. This is outrageous. 
I won't stand for it. I have half a mind to take my business elsewhere. This is not the service that I am accustomed to in first class. You cannot tell me what to do. You're just some stewardess with a peanut-sized brain. I am a fashion influencer with over 10 million followers. They will rain down on this airline like a hurricane if they learn about the little amount of respect I am getting right now. Miss Becky, your satisfaction is important to us, but so is adherence to regulations. We must follow the new policy to ensure the safety and comfort of everyone on board. I hope you know that I am on a first name basis with your CEO and a quick call should straighten this all out. Coco will not be relegated to some checked in luggage. I respect your connections, but the policy applies to all our passengers equally, no matter who they know. Our team will do everything to make Coco's experience pleasant. This is an absolute disgrace. I'm going to send over a complaint this instant. My followers will know this right away, and you'll be sorry you ever stood against me. You better watch out for your job, too, because your superiors will definitely hear about how poorly you treated me and little Coco. I'll make sure this is sorted out my way, and you will know that my word carries weight. This won't end here. Please understand that my role is to enforce the airline's policies while ensuring that you're taken care of. If this escalates further, I will have to involve airport security. Oh, you're going to go ahead and call security on me now? Seems like you can't handle this situation by yourself after all. So pathetic. No wonder you couldn't do anything else with your life. Ladies and gentlemen, take a look here at a live event where entitlement is fighting against the rules. Frequent Flyer is challenging the airline's recently updated pet policy. While I understand your attachment to your pet, the regulations are in place to ensure the comfort and safety of all of our passengers. It's not just about one individual, but the collective experience aboard our flights. How dare you dictate to me what I can and cannot do with my sweet pet? This is inhumane and completely unacceptable. My pet is like my child, and I will not be separated. Observe how the airline employee maintains her composure in the face of rising tempers. A masterclass in patience. The passenger, on the other hand, the rude customer and her behavior are beginning to attract quite a bit of attention. You! How dare you record me without permission! Turn that off right now or I'll have you sued for invasion of my privacy! I have every right to record in a public space, ma'am. What do I care? My followers are all going to support me no matter what. Go ahead and film me. You're only going to make me an even more famous influencer when they see how badly I'm being treated here. I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? <laughs> I've been live streaming this entire encounter for the past five minutes and it doesn't look like your followers are on your side at all. <laughs> you can't be serious. They're, no, they're all misunderstanding me. I'm the victim here. I'm the one being so rudely treated by everyone on this airplane. They should be rallying behind me, not rooting for this dumb airline attendant and this ridiculously stupid policy. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It looks like you just lost a million followers in the last five minutes. I didn't, I didn't even know that was possible. I will not put up with this any longer. Let me speak to your boss right now, and I will get this all settled out. I and Coco will not leave this seat until someone higher up comes and hears our story. Miss, I must insist that you calm down. This scene is not helping your case, and it's not fair to the other passengers who are waiting to board. I don't care about the other passengers. They can wait as long as possible. I will not come down until your boss comes here and speaks with me and Coco. Well, <sighs> You're in luck, because you're looking at the boss. Don't be stupid. I don't want to talk to you. You sure about that? Because I'm the CEO of this airline. <laughs> you can't be. And as the CEO of this airline, you know, I must inform you that the repercussions of your actions are going to extend much beyond the terminal. And we won't need airport security to escort you out, because I'm going to force you to leave this airport myself. Look here, this was just a big misunderstanding. That's all. I'm just trying to take care of my dog. How you treated this lovely airline attendant cannot and will no longer be tolerated. From here on out, you'll be banned from flying on this airline ever again. You cannot do that to me. Oh, look. 
It seems like on the live stream that you just lost three endorsement deals. That was pretty fast. Oh my god. This isn't happening to me. I mean, I never meant to for it to escalate like this. It's just because of this dumb stewardess. I'm getting kicked out of the airline and I'm losing all of these deals. This can't be real. It was never this lovely airline attendant's fault. All this is happening because of your rash choices and rude behavior. And hopefully you learn that no matter how important you think you are, actions are always going to have consequences. This is outrageous. I can't believe this is happening to me. I'm a loyal customer. I've been flying with this airline for years. That may be, but respect is a two-way street. We value all of our customers and no individual is above the policies that protect them. You are right. I will get those millions of followers back and I will make sure everyone knows how I was treated so badly. And this is the worst airline in the world. Regret is often the shadow of quick actions. I hope in time you'll see this incident as a learning opportunity. I will never fly this airline again. You've lost your most famous customer. Come on, Coco. Oh, Julia, I've observed your actions throughout that incident with the rudest passenger I've ever met. And I must say, your composure and ability to maintain a kind demeanor through the whole ordeal is truly commendable. It's moments like these that truly test us. I believe it's not just about following procedures, but it's also about being there for our passengers, understanding their concerns, and ensuring that their journey is as comfortable as possible regardless of their circumstances. Your approach today, it was more than just following training. It was about leading with your heart and that's, that's what makes a real difference. I really appreciate that, sir. I've always thought that our roles here are more than just jobs. We are ambassadors of the airlines, yes, but we're also compassion and humanity. Today was an opportunity to reinforce that belief and act upon it. You're totally right and recognition of your handling of such a stressful situation, I want to offer you more than just my kind words. What do you mean? And all expenses paid vacation seems only a small token of my company's appreciation for your such outstanding work. I'm at a loss of words. <laughs> Thank you so much. Traveling really is a passion of mine. To be rewarded with such a gift is so amazing. That's more than I could ever ask for. It's well deserved. <laughs> so, tell me, what destinations have you dreamt of visiting? Oh, there are so many, but there's one place that's been on my mind, a small island right near Venice, Italy, known for its wonderful food and vibrant streets. To walk those cobblestones and take the aroma of fresh pasta and pastries, it would be a dream come true. That sounds like a perfect choice, and we're going to make it happen. Once we land, we'll sit down and plan out every detail. Your adventure awaits. Thank you so much.